penultimate topic is now going to be mobile banking and payments. Um, there's been a lot of hype about this in recent years, um, a lot of false starts, um, but it seems that um, mobile payments, mobile banking um, is here, um, but it could be another false start. Gareth, I wanted to direct this question at you. Um, we know that mobile payments and banking have, have become important, um, and uh, they seem to have taken off. Um, has mobile banking, has, have mobile payments really taken off, or do you think this could be another false dawn? So I think um, the one thing we can probably all agree on is that mobile banking, mobile payments will happen. Yep. Um, it's not a case of if, it's not a pipe dream. I guess the question becomes as to what level of usage uh, we uh, assign as a measure that is actually happening. And what we start defining as mobile payments and um, mobile banking, uh, if I receive an alert from my bank saying... Um, I've used my credit card as a security check. Does that count as mobile banking? If I use a, uh, a virtual credit card on my BlackBerry over the internet, is that a mobile payment, an internet payment, a credit card payment? So I think there are some distinctions that we're getting hung up on. I think the real question is, um, are we thinking about the mobile as a kind of key device for interacting with our customers? And what are we doing to ensure that we're designing services built for that rather than trying to replicate what we do in the real world for that device. Mm. I think that's the kind of key stumbling block and yeah. things we need to overcome. Yeah. And Mark, I wanted your view on this as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this is a, an area where the same problems have been around for over, over 10 years. I, I had the pleasure of working for a mobile payments company back in the early part of this century. And one of the fundamental problems is you know who's going to benefit from launching mobile payments I'm not talking about mobile banking I'm talking about mobile payments um, you know you have the telecommunications provider in there you have a bank in there you have the merchant in there you may have the credit card providers in there and you're typically talking about small amounts of money so how do you divvy up all of that money um, and, and make it out and the telco thinks they own the customer the bank think that they own the customer and the reality is the customer is not owned by anyone. The customer will make their choice. And I think until that fundamental problem gets solved, then this industry is not going to take off in a grand yeah. scale. You, you bring up a very interesting point there about uh, the consumer owning this. And that there is a lot of confusion, I think, amongst consumers, the difference between mobile banking and yeah. mobile well, payments. Yeah, there is. And I think that the obsession is that people believe that mobile payments um, is only oriented towards a mobile phone. And if you go to Hong Kong, where Cybos was um, uh, the, the, the banking show, the Swift banking show uh, in 2009, you get a, a card, a, an octopus card, and it's it's loaded with um, a small amount of, of value. You can use that at Burger King, McDonald's, you can go up the peak, you can go to the metro. Mm -hmm. Why isn't that mobile payments? I think people are obsessed with it being the phone is going to be um, the, the only device, mm -hmm. the only yeah. channel. Well, should, should that particular form factor. So yeah. the first time I saw an octopus card, it was actually in somebody's watch. Yeah. Yeah, they pay for the shopping yeah. with their yeah. watch. Yeah. So it's come back to what is the mobile. Right. Yes, yes. And Michelle, your view on this? Well, uh, it's confusion. An, well, it's an extremely uh, fascinating and complex ecosystem where there's a lot of actors and players and, 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 and everything else. And I think it's important for banks to start looking at this market a little bit more intently, knowing full well that the technology is not a problem. I mean, we have technological solutions. We have deployed it in several countries around the world where mobile payments, like in Africa, where they make lots of sense. And perhaps just to offer a, a totally different perspective, I also have the pleasure to serve on the board of a large uh, private equity slash venture capital company. In 2008 alone, we received 263 business plans of different entities <laughs> that thought that they were going to have the startup in mobile banking or in mobile payments, and it just illustrates to it just that just illustrates yeah. the amount of uh, flexibility, versatility. Yeah. Are you for the right English word here? That, that's in that market. It's the, the, the complexity from the different permutations that are possible is is just yeah. mind staggering. Two hundred sixty-three. Will, will you be backing any of them? Well, <laughs> uh, to Mark's point, I mean, we looked at all of them or better the, 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 the investment managers did, and not a single one of, 
of them came up with a uh, believable uh, business plan. I mean, in terms of revenue generation and being profitable at some point in time. Just didn't. Yeah, so what were they doing wrong? You could give us a secret of success now. Um, <laughs> if, 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 if you had to rewrite one of those plans, how would you rewrite it in, in, in uh, 10 in, seconds? In most of, the, of, of, most yeah. of these cases, I, I would have said, don't bother, do something else with your really? plan. Yeah, really? Yeah. Because, and that's my personal opinion, I think uh, if they play their card rights, financial institutions will be the winner in this space. Yeah. And, and one of the things we always refrain f- uh, from being clear to pay is going to the business uh, for our own on our own account. Mm. We always wanted to provide the technology to the financial institutions, but I, th- I think even when and we have interesting debate about that earlier on uh, during one of our uh, sessions, uh, we come to an end game. I think there's a high probability that the banks will have one. Mm-hmm. What about uh, regional differences uh, or country differences? Um, are there any re- parts of the world or particular countries that you think? Uh, are more advanced than others in mobile payments, mobile banking, uh, Matt? I think one of the things that we'll see, and it'll be ironic, is some of the countries that we think of as lesser developed countries will probably get there faster mm-hmm. than the developed countries. So could, you, that, could that be Africa? It could be, yeah, in Af- absolutely could be in Africa, could be in India, could be in China. Uh, and I think the reason is that they don't have the infrastructure that we have. So they don't have landlines and merchant terminals in every store for credit card swipe. So they have an opportunity. They don't have such a vested investment in the current infrastructure. Mm. Exactly right. I mean, we have deployed our solution in 16 African countries on a software as a service uh, model. And uh, for us, the need is obviously not that high because you have all kinds of multiple ways you can interact with your bank. But if your nearest uh, uh, branch is 18 miles away and you don't have any means of fast transport, a mobile mm. phone becomes very attractive as a, as a way uh, of conducting uh, business. So you've explained developing countries are, are well ahead, which yes. uh, to some people might seem counterintuitive, but actually there is a, a logic uh, behind it. It makes I, sense. I do think there are some very developed countries that are, are using mobile phones or, or, or devices for, for payments and have been doing for years. I mean, Japan is the one that's mm. been Doka. trying the Doka yeah. model. Mm. I think it has been proven to be... That's a, that's, a unique, model, right? I mean, yeah. that's a telco model, right? That's a telco driven model. And it's a captive audience as well. I mean, the, yeah. the, mm-hmm. the way people travel into Tokyo and the, the amount mm-hmm. of time they have on you know, commuter trains and so forth, a lot of it's around gaming, ringtones, that sort of stuff. Yeah. So, so, do you think that model could take off in Europe or well, it in the US? Done. I mean, Dokomo tried to come over and, and use the type of service in Europe and it, and it didn't work. Again, it's a cultural thing. Uh, you know, and I go back to the point about Hong Kong and, and in London, obviously, we have the Oyster card where. You know, um, I think it, it, it's a, a horses for courses model. You, you'll get different types of devices that are all umbrellaed in, in this mobile payments mm. um, scenario, and it'll be different from country to country. I think I would like to add one okay. final thing, and that's also the reason why I think financial institutions should play a very important role here, to say the very least. It's that with all these things that are related to money, uh, you can create different, if you're not careful, monetary quantities. And I think we already have more than enough with one, M1 and M2 and M3 and whatever else is out there. <laughs> I don't think the world is waiting for another uh, monetary quantity that can have its own velocity and hence its associated risks. And I mean, I think the regulators and financial institutions should really consider this very carefully. Yeah. Did, did, have they been considering it to the best of your knowledge? Uh, uh, the Chinese have made comments about uh, some of the virtual currencies in, yeah. whose name escapes me at the moment. Linden Lord. Yes, and the equivalent of that, there's a big game yeah. there which has been used as a virtual currency yeah. which you can convert and they're saying there's so oh. much stored value in there it could, in theory, destabilise. Yeah, you have its own associated systemic risk with it. Mm. And again, well, who regulates that? Right? What right. agency regulates that? And, and that's the reason why banks should step in. Absolutely. Because they're regulated. Correct. And that's one of their unique key differentiators. Yeah.